Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the XLS exports that you have in Naxport, but really closely looking at why you would use each one and the implications behind it. So before we start looking at the XLS exports, just to explain that this template is what we're going to use as, as an example. We have these three categories, uh, Team A Possession, Team A Shot, Team A Score, and the same three categories for Team B. We have descriptors in here, first half and second half, pass, attack and third entry, on target and off target. Um, the first half and second half are automatically added, or um, we've got second half running now. So let me just go and add some clips in. You see all the information showing up here in the play-by-play. -play. So I'm going to do a couple of examples here. Let's say we've got team A possession, and I really want to know how many passes we have within this possession. Okay, so I'm going to click pass multiple times, and then I'm going to click uh, attack in third entry. Let's do team B possession. Let's do multiple passes here. And this one doesn't have an attack in third entry. We've got team A shot on target, team B shot off target, scores. Okay, just very simple stuff we've got here. We can see our second half descriptors going in everywhere. We've also got down here some clips with notes in. And again, just if I double click here in the play by play window on the third column, okay, I can type some notes in. So I just want you to bear those things in mind that we've got some clips with notes on. We've got some clips with the same descriptor multiple times. Uh, every clip has an automatically added descriptor of either first half or second half. If you don't have multiple descriptors going in each time, it might be because here on your options in your register control window, you haven't got this ticked on. By default, it, by default it is, but if not, you just need to tick that on. Okay, so let's go to our timeline and let's just export each one of these options and see why we might use each one. So before we go into looking at export one, let's just look here. When I've got my data grid, if I go team A possession here, obviously we have the start and end time of our clip. Uh, I've got my timeline options to show the duration of this clip rather than the end time of it. But within this clip, I can also see the descriptor click times. So a really important bit of information that we can get from that export. So when each descriptor was clicked, okay, and here we've got attack in third entry. So we started at this time, and then how long did it take us to get to attack in third entry? And I could play back a couple of seconds before then. So just something I want you to bear in mind when we look at XLS export one. So to export our data, you press this option here, and we've got other options of some simple things to look at here, obviously getting out our XML files and our CSVs, but we're going to focus on these XLS formats. So let's look at format one. So I'm going to click here. If you're using a graphic descriptor tool, you can choose to export your XY values and they'll all show in a column. I haven't got any graphic descriptor information here, but you'll see where it would show. So I'm selecting all of my categories to export. I'm then going to go and put this in my XLS exports folder. And say this is format one. So what does format one look like? We have in chronological order each category that appeared and I can see the start and end time for the uh, for the clip. Obviously the click time here so this will depend this will vary if you have pre and post times for your clips. I can see the duration of this category so really useful here but the key bits of information I have now are those descriptor times. So let's say I was wanting to see how long it takes us to get an attack in third entry from our possessions. This is a really useful export for you because now I can take this bit of information, our start time, or it could be our click time because it's the same here. And I'm going to look at the differences between these two cells. So if you want to look at information, time-based information, XLS format one is the most in-depth export for you. It's always going to order things in chronological order, so it might not be easy to do some simple Excel formulas on it um, due to the layout, but this gives you the most information to look at. So XLS format one, I think is most useful if you want to look at time-based data for your descriptors. Let's now look at format two. So again, our X, Y values, if we wanted them in there, Let's open up format two. Okay, we've got our start, click and end time, our XY column here where that where the data would go in. 
And this is really useful if you want to see how many times the same descriptor appeared. So remember we had that option of letting a descriptor be used multiple times. XLS Format 2 is the best one if you want to see the same descriptor appearing multiple times. So here I can see there were one, two, three, four, five passes within this possession. Okay, so if you're really interested in how many times a descriptor appears inside each register, each category, XLS Format 2 is the one for you. And the order that is, these descriptors go in is basically their click order. Okay, so the information goes across left to right in the order that it appeared. So that's Format 2. Now, Format 3 is a really useful one. What I'm going to do first before we look at Format 3 is go back to the register environment because I need to show you something in the template that helps to explain XLS Format 3. So on your template, when you edit your template, in your button properties window, you can open up the matrix preset order. So you click this button here, and this means that whenever you use this template, your category rows are always going to be in this order in your timeline. And if you open up a matrix, your descriptor columns are always going to be in this order as well. So here I'm choosing which half, whether a shot was on target or off target, then we've got pass and attack in third entry. Now, this is really important because this is where XLS Format 3 gets that information from. So your matrix preset order is what you need to set when you're going to use Format 3. So just bear that in mind and then we'll go and look at Format 3 now and that should make some more sense. So back to our timeline. OK, let's open up XLS Format 3. You see here it's telling us it keeps the descriptor order. So let's save that as format three. And now I again have my categories, start, click, end time, the X, Y data would show here. But these descriptor columns, this column is only ever going to show first half. This is only ever going to show second half, on target, off target, pass, attack in third entry. And that's because that's what I set in my template matrix preset. So this is useful if you just want to see that possessions had a pass in them or, a, or an attack in third entry, because you can do some simple uh, sums of, of looking at information that's appearing within your columns here. Obviously, the information we're missing here, which we saw in format two, is this possession actually had multiple pass descriptors. So when you use format three, it's only ever going to show one count within here. So this is saying that this clip had this descriptor in at least once. If we wanted to know how many times that descriptor appeared, we'd use format two. So format three lays things out there. So XLS format one, two, and three are giving you the most bits of data. The last ones we've got really simple to look at. So let's use format four. Let's open that file here. Okay. We're not, uh, getting any descriptor information here. So this is really easy to use if you just want to look at durations of your clips. So obviously in chronological order of each of our categories, we would see the XY data again here, but I can see start, click and end time and it gives me my duration for each clip there as well. And then you could reorganize these things. You might go and add some um, filters to your data and then we could reorder these things as we need. And I can basically sum those things up and get my total duration for team A possession, for example. Okay, so format four, the final one we have is format five. So again, format four and format five, really just for category information and looking at clip durations. The only difference between format four and format five is that in format five, we would use that if we wanted to get the notes out. So you might have seen from my play by play window that I added the look at this note. Format five, gives us a column with our notes that are added in. So if you wanted to get the text information of any notes, your qualitative data that's been added, Format 5 is the best one for you to use. So hopefully that explains the differences between formats 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And using this example, you can think about the data that you want to create and review and export from that export and then apply the correct format uh, export for your data. Hope you found that useful. Thank you.